So I'm Sanjoy. Joy. So before I start the session, I have a quick question for you. How many of us present here have some experience with uh, blended learning? Can I just have a quick show of hands, please? Uh, just so that I know where I stand. Okay, thank you. Okay, so this, just to quickly dive into the whole of our session, I'm going to tell you briefly about what is blended learning, for those of us who are not familiar with it. I'm going to take the project which we undertook, the blended learning project, and I'll show you the results. And of course, what we carry at home when we go from here. Okay. So, I mean, just imagine what makes of the blenders. You know, all of us are blenders in our kitchen, right? So, we take different modalities of learning, we put them in a the blender, we stir it, and we mix it together, and we put it in the brains of the student, that becomes blended learning. Just a very simple blending. I mean, if you look at those Venn di diagrams, basically, to put it in a nutshell, it incorporates two components or two modalities of learning. One, we have the face-to-face -face traditional classroom meeting, which all of us have been doing. Just been there for the last 500 years. And now what we do is we take online learning and we combine the two and it becomes blended learning. So if you look at the Venn diagrams that you see on one circle, we have online or <coughs> and the other one is the opposite. And where the two diagrams overlap, that portion is the blended portion. So that's the simplest way to look at what is blended learning. Let's go a little deeper. So that's why I call it the guts of the blended learning. Where do you, what are the siblings? Or what are the siblings? <coughs> are, these are my terminologies. Most of the universities, they believe in the three sibling model. On one end of the spectrum, you have the traditional pure face to face. On the other end of the spectrum, you have the pure online. And somewhere in between, you have the blended. This is why I call it the three sibling model. So in this model, and this is the one which we have followed, this is sometimes also referred to synonymously as hybrid learning. <coughs> However, there are some universities which differentiate between blended learning and hybrid learning. So I call it the four sibling model. That is most notably the Illinois Online Network, University of Illinois. What they have done is they have separated blended learning from hybrid learning. So in their model, blended learning is closer to face-to-face. -face. So a larger component is face-to-face, -face, a smaller component is online. And in hybrid is the reverse. A larger component is online, a smaller component is face-to-face. -face. But however, we follow the traditional three sibling model. Okay. Let's take a quick look at the classification of blended learning. Rotation model is the one which we will focus on where the students rotate different modalities of learning at the discretion of the teacher. And this is about various sub models, which I'll check to you a little later. There are other components also, like for example, flex learning, where the students meet the professor at the flexibility, at the availability on a day-to-day -day basis, on a need-to basis with the professor. That's why it's called the flex model. Then you have a la carte, that's like we go to a restaurant and we order food according to what's there in the menu. Here the student teaches, picks up one course which he wants to do, he or she wants to do online and the rest of the courses he or she wants to pursue as face to face. That's called the a la carte model. And then we have the enriched virtual model where the professor starts with the face to face and then the student continues online and enhances his experience. So that's the one. <coughs> this is the traditional subdivision classification. However, a little more sophisticated version of the same classification is the next one. If you take a closer look at this, you see that the rotation model is the one which is the true hybrid component. While the flex, the alagate, and the enriched virtual are closer to the online component. So we will focus on the rotation model, especially the subdivision or the flip classroom, because that's what our project is all about, and I'm going to explain to you how it was a flipped classroom and what is a flipped classroom. And that's going to be the first. So let's come to the next part of our presentation. What was this project we are doing? Well, I'm a neuroscience professor. So let's go what the first speaker saw. I was very much for neuroplasticity and neuroplasticity. And neuroscience is a very, very difficult subject to teach. You, know, you can see I've lost most of my hair, right? <laughs> <laughs> that is genetic, by the way. This is just you getting it. And in neuroscience, there are certain topics which are even more difficult. And therefore, I chose a really difficult topic that is the hearing pathway. We call it the auditory pathway. How something goes through this ear and goes to the center of the brain and goes to many other parts of it. 
So I decided that I'm going to do a blended learning project on my students using this. And I had three objectives. First, to see, it was a pilot project, a small project, to see whether it does really improve student outcomes, learning outcomes. Secondly, I wanted to get a feedback from the students, how they felt about this whole blended learning project. You know? And you'll see the interesting results when they did. And of course, we use this audience response system clickers. How many of us are familiar with this ARS, audience response system clickers? Okay, so I'll tell you about that also, and I'll show you the results also. You'll see the results in actual results in real time. So this was my three objectives of my project. So this is me taking the class, and those are my classrooms. Those are my actual, of course, they gave me some other projects. Class and there are my students, only for three students in a basic medical science course. I'm a neuroscience professor, as I told you. And uh, I was working in the Caribbean, so that's a map of the Caribbean. I was pointing towards one small island. And we have to drill down really on Google map. Those islands are so small that uh, you have to go right almost above the ground to see the size of the island, you know. It's uh, <coughs> I'm just kidding. It's, it's very small. I mean, you can see one end of the sea and you can see the sea on the other side. Very small islands. So anyway, so this was where we did the project. So let me tell you briefly about what was it. It was a pilot project as I told you. And it had two components. One online component and one face-to-face -face component. The online component was for 30. I mean, I estimated that the students will have, not have to spend more than 30 minutes at home online. Because I don't want to burden them too much. You know, otherwise they start screaming blue murder. And the next day, the face-to-face -face conference will be 50, 50, 100 minutes. So, so this was the... And as I explained to you, it was a rotation model of blended learning. The fifth classroom. How it is, I'm going to show you just a little later. Okay, so how did we do the online component? First, I explained to the students briefly, look guys, I'm going to do a nice thing for you guys. You know what? What, what, what? Blended learning. Okay, so hold your horses, don't get so upset. It's, I didn't go into much details as I did here. I told them, it's nothing. You're going to be just treated with some nice videos at home. So I explained the whole thing to them and then I gave them the online component. So what was the online component? I gave them a picture of the entry I'll show you the picture. I mean, it's really crazy. And then I give them a link to a video, an online video. Just 4.1 minute, that's all. And to help them along, I gave them two objectives. So that they will focus on those two objectives when they look at the video, otherwise they treat it as a movie. And I also gave them two questions pertaining to those objectives, so that they will have something to focus on. And I told them, you look at that movie as many times as you want, don't spend too much time, don't Google around, don't Facebook around, and don't Twitter around, just look at that video only, and just look at those objectives. And you will need them tomorrow when I come for the class. Okay, so this is the picture of already part of me. This is just, by the way, this is not a class on neuroscience, so, but you can see how difficult, how complicated it is. It's really crazy. And then I give them this link. So they have to just click on that link and they just have to watch the movie. It's very small. Next, these were the two. I told them that you have to focus on two things. You have to know what are all the components of the object pathway. There are eight components. And you have to know them in the right sequence. <coughs> watch for these eight components in the right sequence. And you must also know exactly the impulses go from where to where and how they travel and all the rest of it. That's called the lateral agility projection. It's a little technical, but these are the things you have to focus on. And these were the same two questions which I asked them. What are the components? And what is the lateral agility projection? Just keep those two questions in mind. That's all. Nothing more. Then next thing. The face-to-face -face component. Before we even start in the lecture, embedded within my PowerPoint slides, I put three questions, embedded them using this, the software which I will show you just now. And these were the three pre-lecture questions. And after the whole session was over, when I finished my lecture of 100 minutes, I embedded five more questions. What was their feedback? And I'm going to show you the questions and I'm going to show you the responses also. And how we did we this embedding, we did it by means of this audience response system figure. So those of you who are familiar with it and those who are not familiar, let me tell you quickly what it was. It's actually a software for turning points up <coughs> from turning technologies. So we install this software in the computer and we open our slides within the software. And each student is given one instrument in their hand, a small instrument, the size of a credit card. It's called the ARS clicker, audience response system clicker. And as you can see, it's got rotations, A, B, C, D, E. And it is controlled it, by radio frequency waves. There's a small USB stick here. It controls 
So we put the question embedded within our slides. The students see a question. We give them one minute. They think, they talk, they pay and share, and they'll end one minute. I say, okay, finish. And I press the next button and give the response. So this is how the audience response system clicker works. The clicker as well as the software, they all are the same software. Okay. So now I'm going to show you the three questions and I'm going to show you the students' responses. Uh, so this is a nice place where you can also do a little bit of guessing. Okay, so this was the question. Again, don't bother about the question. It's a technical question. It's a question about the auditory pathway. Don't worry about what is inferior colliculus, what is the lateral lemniscus, and what is the cochlear nucleus. It's not part of our session. So I put this question. This was my news. So before even I start my lecture, this was meant, meant entirely on what they had studied in the online conference the previous day. And I put these three four, four options and I gave them one minute. Okay, you have one minute, you press your clickers and you can talk, you can discuss, do whatever you want, only for one minute. And guess what we got that. So this is an actual response I'm going to show you now. So when I press the switch, the next button, the correct answer came up and the students' aggregated responses came up. And as you can see, just even before I had started my lecture, two-thirds of the class got the question right. No, so it was a small, small this thing, pleasure for me. At least they have learned something, so now I know where to start from. <coughs> okay, and so I'm really happy. The next question, same thing. Again, I put that question. One minute. Give your response. Okay, so this was the response. A little less than two thirds of the class got it right. The third question was a really difficult one. It was a brand new really question. I just wanted to see whether whether they're fooling the pulling my leg or whether they're playing more. So I gave them a really difficult. This all three <coughs> So what do you think was the response for this one? Good, bad, ugly? Ugly. Good. Ugly. Good. Ugly. You're not guessing me. You're absolutely right. You know? Ninety-two percent of the class got it right. This is a really difficult one. As you can see in the options, it's a so crazy option. Right? I mean, I won't give this question the exams, but I give it then. And the students were so happy, they all started clapping. You know? so, <coughs> I mean, the boss made sure you got it right. And mind you, I've not even started my lecture. This was purely based on what they didn't know. My God. So these are the three lecture questions. And of course, I had my session, 50 minutes, then break in 50 minutes, finished answering questions, clearing doubts, and everything. And then I posed the next five questions. These were to get their feedback about the whole project. The first question was, what did they find the online video? So it was in the form of a light card scale, from very helpful to not very helpful. I considered ABC as somewhat on the positive side and DAE somewhat on the negative side. So let's see what was the response of the students. The aggregated response was sort of mixed. So I would say that ABC together constituted about 75 percent. While the rest of the event, every class has its back pages, not very important. Okay. So this is the first question. <laughs> Next question. <coughs> Pre-work question, the two questions, the two questions, <coughs> questions that I gave them at home. So what was their response? Again, about 81, about 44 fifths of them said, okay, helpful, moderately helpful, reasonably helpful, again, one fifth of them. Usually, you can expect that. The next question, how did they find the pre-lecture questions, the three questions which I showed you just now? What was <coughs> their feedback about that? And again, nine tenths of them said, we really found it useful, helpful. Maybe because they were still thinking of the fact that they got it right, you know, what are the reasons? <coughs> so, the fourth question was overall, what was the experience about this blended learning project? Namely, the face to face component following, following the online component and all the rest of it. And again, about three quarters of them generally said, okay, it was reasonably good. Now, the last one. This will give us an insight into the minds of the students. Would they like to have some more exercises like this? <laughs> what do you think? Yes, yes. Um, yes. Well, that's what we would like to think. So, but actually, it doesn't work out that way. So that's, the, that's what it gives us an insight to the mind of the student. They're tricky people, you know. You have to understand, you have to think how to guess them. You know? So, only a little more than half of them says yes, another half of them says maybe not. Maybe. You know, so, this was uh, the response. Or would they like to have more blend? But this is just a small pilot project with only 43 students. So this was the last <coughs> response I got. So therefore, just to summarize, I mean, the most of the students understood the material well even before I started my lecture, and the majority of them found it helpful in, in a manner of speaking. This system, and as you could see, that the ARS response system, the clicker system, 
I've been using it for a long time, and this one is the time when I really put it to use, put it to test, and I found that it gives us wonderful results, wonderful from both points of view. We, as a teacher, we immediately come to know uh, how much the students have learned, and after we have taken a purpose, suppose a concept, and explain the concept, and we find that the majority of the students have understood it well, <coughs> or not understood it well, then we know we can deliver our course, no, we can tailor our course to track accordingly. So the ProPR system is a very useful tool in this regard. And how was it? It was a rotation model, as I told you. Rotation model means the students rotate on a fixed schedule determined by the teacher at the discretion of the teacher. So in this case, the schedule was you do the online component, which I will tell you. You don't spend too much time on this. And the next day, you'll have a face to face conference. So it was a rotation. We can have many more modalities of learning, but one of those modalities have to be online to conform to the definition of blended learning. And why was it a flipped classroom? Now let's take a traditional classroom, which all of us are familiar with. What do we do with the traditional classroom, which has been there for the last so many centuries? We first teach the students the basics of the, what are the, the concepts, and we tell them, you enhance it at home, you learn more further ahead. Here we did the opposite. They learn the basics at home, and we enhanced it in the classroom. So therefore, we flipped the classroom. So that's why it is called the rotation model method flipped model. So rotation flipped classroom. So this was the rotation flipped classroom model which we did. <coughs> As I told you, this is just a pilot project, therefore we need to do more studies. We need a lot to have a larger student population. I should give them more difficult topics. Auditory pathway itself is not sufficient. It's very difficult, but I should give them something like you know, what basal ganglia or Parkinson's disease or whatever, whatever. And, and I should have a larger group of students. I should that I can have more robust results and more concrete conclusions. Only then we can generalize our findings to the rest of the population. But otherwise, the preliminary results, this was what we got. And it was quite encouraging to stimulate us to do further work. And finally, when we leave this home room for our coffee, what, did we, what will we carry home with us? <coughs> Those of us who are not familiar with the learning projects, we have seen that there are four models, though we do not remember all the names of the models, but we do know there are four models. We have seen how to conduct a blended learning project, and we have seen what is the, at least the preliminary educational value of a blended learning. What else did we learn? We got an insight of the minds of the students. How they can fool us. So we should always be ready to understand so that we can deliver, we can tailor our course delivery strategy accordingly. Because we have to understand, because after all, in order to be able to deliver our learning effectively, we should be one step ahead of their thinking process. Only then can we be effective teachers. So this is a, a useful exercise <coughs> so that we can get inside <coughs> the students. And we have also seen this how an audience response system, turning point technologies, how it works. And of course, not that this is part of the session, but all of you know that there is something called auditory pathway, isn't it? Something called hearing pathway. What happens when hearing goes from this year, as the old saying was, it goes from this year, it comes out from this year. No, it goes from this year, and it goes to this half of the brain, 90% of it, but 10% goes to the same side. How does it happen? Please don't ask me. But it does happen. So that is the auditory pathway. That was just by the way. That was just a byproduct of this whole exercise. So these are some of the things that we will carry home when we go from here. Okay? So thank you very much for watching. This was, and uh, if there are any questions, any comments, anything, I would be very, very happy to explain to you. Yes, please.